Bob Chapman of the internationalforecaster.com, former intelligence officer himself, one of the biggest silver and gold brokers at one time before he retired, had the biggest newsletter. He's now back, and it's good to have Bob on with us. Bob, I just covered that because I wanted you to talk about it before we got into the economy and calls. But can you break down uh, and, and elaborate or add to what I just said? Well, you know, pretty comprehensive, but my own personal experience uh, we used to spy on Stasi and the KGB and the NKVD and uh, the mainline operators out of Moscow. And uh, we even uh, used to track uh, armored units and you name it, uh, we did it. And we were really good at it. But what you say about Stasi is so true. I lived in Germany for several years. I spoke German. And uh, Stasi was absolutely the worst of the worst and when they the u.s government hired premakoff and and wolf i i just really couldn't believe it i was speechless and so i knew what they were going to do just like you did but this is an example of government or people who control government setting up a situation where we could all spy on each other and who better to learn from than the most wicked of the spies and incidentally, what really floored me as well, after the merger in the early 90s of West and East Germany, none of the spies for East Germany and West Germany, nor none of the people who spied on other people within, within East Germany, were ever brought to trial. It's just incredible. And so, you know, it was like after the Second World War, and when we had Mueller, head of the one of the heads of the SS, working for the U.S. government, and he lived here for many years, and then died and is buried in the San Francisco area. And so, what does that tell you about the people behind the scenes? That years ago we never realized what they were really up to. It tells you that they were in on it. They finance these people. They set these people up in business. I'm talking about the Russians, the East Germans, etc. Well, it's now, and, as you know, been declassified, London Guardian, other publications. Hitler was MI5, and so was Mussolini. And then we already have the Lord Milner group in the 20s saying, we've got to put dictators in to wreck Europe, then we'll go have a war with them. And that's why Hitler thought he had a deal with England when he invaded Czechoslovakia. But that's absolutely correct. And, you know, Mussolini was paid in the 1920s a great deal of money. A hundred pounds a month was a lot of money. Uh, at that time, the pound was worth 475. And so that's almost five times one or, you know, uh, that would be, uh, uh, $500 a month. I believe the headline and, was he was paid that a week, but go ahead. A week? Well, that, that's even more astronomical. They must have uh, really liked him. And if you've read any of Mussolini's works, which I have, you'll find out he went through the teens and the 20s as a communist. And then he became a fascist. Now, fascism was 1927 and beyond. But anyway, uh, the point is well taken. This is what they got planned for us. This morning I was on CBS, and the, and the moderator of the program, after I was telling the people the truth about what was going on with the economy, uh, he said to me, um, what do you pray to? Print a, 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 you paint a very black picture. And I said, well, all I'm doing is coming here and telling you the truth. And that's all I'm interested in. And I can back up everything that I'm saying. And with that, they took me off the air. <laughs> Bob Chapman, stay there. We're going to get into the economy, take phone calls, get into the health care bill. Watch me. Watch me. I got it. Watch me. I got it. Hey! Okay, let's go back to Bob Chapman. Bob, I want to get into the stock market, the economy, gold, where all this is going. But first, I want to get into the health care bill. I haven't read the 1900 pages. It was just made public, as you know, yesterday morning. But uh, the Associated Press, Reuters, Fox, they're all reporting that, and the Democrats are proud of this, it does have the death panels that decide on the rationing. That's in there. Those are real. It does have, you know, they kept saying we're not going to have a public option. It's in there. It does have the three to $5,000 fines. If you're 18 and don't want to go get health insurance, 
Uh, the insurance companies, the Wall Street Journal reports, and this was uh, two weeks ago, insurers stand against committee's plan, and then you read here, it's the spokesman for the insurance consortium, and they say, because we helped write the bill with bigger penalties, this doesn't have enough penalties. So it admits that they're actually for it, and now they're supporting it again. Uh, when Pelosi got called a Nazi for the death panel during her press conference, via someone that smuggled the bullhorn up close, they were quickly grabbed like they were a terrorist, uh, she laughed and said, oh, there's somebody from the insurance companies. When it's big insurance doing this, as Ron Paul has said, uh, your take on this monstrosity. Ron Paul is, is, is exactly correct. And they're going to try to ram this thing through, and it's up to us to get all over the House and the Senate and say we don't want this bill. And if we inundate them with enough emails and phone calls and faxes and letters, maybe we can do some good because you don't want this. It will be an absolute nightmare. You know, Bob, I know they lie as a course of action in the mainstream media and government, but is it just me or is the lying intensifying? Because just like the cap-and-trade bill the House has passed was worse than what we thought when we finally got it, this is worse than what we originally thought, and they're busy lying, saying it's wonderful. The, the arrogance and lying are getting greater and greater and greater. And why? Because their programs didn't easily go through. Cap and trade, as you mentioned, this medic, medical program, and of course um, the the what they've had to put up with with HR twelve oh seven and SB six oh four in regard to the Federal Reserve and its uh, auditing and investigation. Uh, they're beside themselves. Not only the people in Congress, but the people who are banging on their door every morning and saying, "We got to get this stuff passed. I don't care what you've got to do." To make it happen, I don't care what it costs. And they're, st you know, standing there with bushel baskets full of $100 bills. And so they're desperate. They can't get this stuff passed. And so that's why uh, they react the way that they do and, uh, and, and also lie and deceive like Mrs. Pelosi and saying, oh, it's the insurance companies, and as you pointed out, uh, they're in on it. They're part of it. Well, that's just like the Federal Reserve, as you know. The private banks that own the private front company or holding company, they are on record in history having the newspapers they owned run headlines as if the private banks were against the Federal Reserve, when it actually gave them power over the monetary system and removed that from Congress unconstitutionally, that was a trick they played. And they do this over, and it's like the oil companies are publicly financing the greenhouse gas tax on coal, and the whole thing is their plan because they're owned by the big banks on record, but then if you're against the global carbon tax, they claim you work for the oil companies when the stinking oil companies are the authors of it. Things aren't the way they seem to be. It's just like when Glenn Beck gives you 95% of the truth and then sets you off in the other direction with the propaganda and the misdirection and the other 5%, which I saw him do a couple of days ago in this China thing. But this is a great segue for me. Uh, one of the uh, people who is fairly close to me who uh, is the owner of a large corporation and uh, they recently started to do business with a medium uh, to upper size bank in the Midwest because their original bank wouldn't lend them money anymore, and the company's loaded with money. I mean, they, they borrow money just because, you know, the, the bridge thing so that they don't have to use money for other things. But anyway, the story is this. Can, can stay there, stay there. We're going to get okay. the story when we come back. Get into the economy. And my next issue, I know where this is going. I haven't heard the story yet. The big banks orchestrated the derivative scam to create fiat wealth to buy up infrastructure. Now they're threatening to bring us into a depression if we don't give them unlimited power over all the smaller financial institutions. And so there's a huge consolidation happening. 